live from Las Vegas. It's the Q, covering Oracle's modern marketing experience. Brought to you by Oracle. Now here's your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back, everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for Oracle's modern marketing experience, part of their marketing cloud. This is the Cube Silicon Angles flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Jeff Frick. Next guest is Tim Brown, Global Vice President of Product Development, Oracle Marketing Cloud, former CEO of Maximizer, acquired last September. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you. So what's it like to be acquired by Oracle? People always want to know, because Oracle writes big fat checks. When they, when they buy, they buy big. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, so you guys are up and running. Well, take us through that, what was it like? <laughs> um, so it's, uh, it's not one big bang, of course. There's a se sequence of stages you go through. Um, and you, uh, look, you, you have to, you get huge power from the platform Oracle brings you. Um, and we were 400, 400 people. We had lightweight processes. We can operate on a fleet of foot basis. Um, if you're going to do that at the scale OMC is now, you have to have more processes and regimented systems in place. So uh, you have to just get used to that process. But it's been it's been a blast. It's been and Oracle does fantastic. buy at scale companies. They don't really buy tuck unders like IBM does more traditionally. They buy tuck unders, bring them in, blue wash them, and they create them. Um, did you guys work with Oracle before? Sure. Relationships. So they give. They see you in action. They get a sure. feel so for the, we some were, of the numbers. We were pretty well known in the industry. Uh, we were. Um, we won the last Forrester Wave in our industry in Q3 last year. Uh, so top right in that, which kind of got us noticed. Um, but we had been working uh, quite closely with uh, quite a few clients of OMC already. So it was a. It was a. It was a. It was a very warm uh, introduction. And for us, um, the the timing was was. Uh, a conscious decision. The, the whole world of marketing is moving from point solutions to uh, coordinated marketing campaigns cross-channel based on common customer data. We couldn't do that as a point solution. We built the most powerful platform to optimize the customer experience, but we didn't have those elements. So bringing in the orchestration capabilities of responses and Eloqua, coupled with the data layer that um, Blue Kai and Data Logics and ODC bring in. It's a fantastic, it's a killer combination. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting topic, is you know Oracle talks a lot about having an integrated solution. So the fact that you could now add those components within your own, you know, kind of subset application and get that much more value is a pretty powerful story. No, exactly. We look our platform um, combines A/B testing, multivariate testing, automated um, customer insights, so we data mine segments and personalization. Those things get are completely dependent on the quality of data you have about customers, um, and to be a, to generate a really fulfilling um, customer experience these days, you can't just do it on one channel. So yeah. you know we we were, we built our business on web and app, and we're very good at doing that. What about SMS? What about email? They all have to be consistent. So the timing from both sides, I think, was was. Was great. Yeah, I mean, and was Kevin good. made a great comment yesterday. They made the investment decision architecturally to make the data layer that horizontally scalable piece, which solves a lot of problems on this point solution. And you guys, as you mentioned, made a good call to go see, see the writing on the wall, if you will, so you get more power with Oracle. Talk about where you guys now fit in and just share with the audience that we kind of jumped ahead where Maximizer fits in, you know, vis a vis the portfolio of what's out there. Is it just B2C? Is it is there B2B, is it just A-B testing, has the role change you mentioned, you know, yeah, uh, sure. uh, these other, Blue Kai and, and, um, uh, and these other products, where does it all fit in? Okay, um, that's quite a big question. <laughs> <laughs> let, me try, let me attempt to make to uh, address it, and correct me if I go off track. Um, so, uh, look, the technologies you, we set ourselves up to be a one-stop shop. Everything you need to deliver a fantastic, engaging customer experience online. Uh, if you do that, you get loyalty, you get you get um, very high value customers, uh, you get revenue and profit. So um, we've built from the ground up um, everything from the simplest to most complex technology that you need to do it. So everything from A-B testing through to the most automated, advanced one-to-one -one personalization where we're looking at your customer profile, we're looking at the context you're in. You know, if you're, a, if you're on a travel site, are you in a business mode or are you in a family mode? Uh, to produce, to, to, to get the granular personalization you need to make a great compelling experience. So that, we bring this entire layer, we sit basically across the top of the OMC stack. Now, for us to deliver great experiences, we need two other things. 
uh, we need the next layer down in the stack, we need the orchestration. Because we need to be, no, it's no good having a, a fantastic experience on your mobile phone and then it's completely out of sync with the email messages you're getting. Okay, so that orchestration, we, we are part of, we, we need that uh, to deliver a great experience. And then un at the bottom of the stack is the data layer. Um, and so we are just, uh, we're a kind of a, a very lightweight layer that sits across the top of the stack. We can be deployed with one line of code, it's literally one line of code, and you can use us to do everything I've spoken about. Um, and we can exploit uh, and make actionable this wealth of customer data and be part of the orchestrated campaigns that you've heard this so many times, I'm sure, but in OMC it's the core belief that you need this 360 degree view of, of uh, campaigns. Does that? Yeah, so you work up and down the stack, so you don't necessarily need, is, is there other parts of the portfolio that you work well with? Is it a combination of things? What yeah, yeah. specifically yeah, so, um, do customers deploy? So, look, our customer base is, is mid, large enterprise, quite a few Fortune 500, across um, typically B2C classic segments. So, um, you know, be retail, finance, um, travel, uh, media, and actually, um, rather appropriately, uh, gaming and gambling, <laughs> um, <laughs> given our location. So, um, uh, that, they're the sector we're working. So there's a huge overlap in customer base with every other part of the OMC stack. We've got loads of common customers. Um, we, um, the, if you look at the way we're integrating, and you heard an announcement yesterday, and we've already integrated in some areas, and I can talk about them in a bit more detail, yeah. maybe, if Great. that's of interest. Um, but um, the, um, the integration is, I mean, the very first thing we, we did, the day after it was announced, was start thinking about integrations, and there are some very obvious ones. Um, so, in no particular order, um, I guess the announcement yesterday was that we're bringing a web capability to uh, responses. So, responses campaigns now, when you're in program and you're, you know, you're doing your, uh, working out your various uh, interactions um, that you want to coordinate, um, we, uh, there's now a box there that says web uh, or uh, mobile app, and we, we are powering that. More than that, we're bringing the ability so you're to you're adjusting to the form factor, the experience side, mobile uh, or web. Sure, we can, we can operate in both, both channels. We can optimize experiences in both channels. Um, and um, we, so we're providing that, so filling in the gap there for responses. Um, and uh, we're secondly, we're bringing ability to work out, okay, you want to orchestrate uh, this campaign with the, with the aim of converting more mid-tier loyalty customers to, to top tier. Okay, well, is it working? So you've got these theories about, oh, we hit them this email over this time and then hit them on the web with this and caught, but what's actually working here online? So that testing capability is very powerful to, to work out uh, and actually prove what the uplifts are and to do a continuous learning process. So the first, that first integration response is announced yesterday, really, really exciting. Um, what will come on next from the responses is uh, bringing our technologies to bear in email. So we, we were a point solution. We did not have any email capabilities. Of course, OMC has yeah. vast <laughs> email capabilities. What we can bring to email, uh, and actually, um, so we, we can bring is open time personalization. So when you open the email that's been come out from a responsive system, it will take into account time of day, geo, weather, a lot of different factors to say, okay, what should the content of that email look like? How should it be structured? What's the layout? So we can do that in real time. Um, so they're, the f they're two obvious integrations that are happening here and now. Um, following on from that will be Eloqua. Mm -hmm. Very, very similar integrations, but um, just with a slightly more bias to obviously B to B situations and are predominantly with B to C. Um, the second one, integration, which is already up and running, I think Steve alluded to this in his keynote yesterday, was, um, which maybe caught people by surprise a bit, was we are already integrated with um, what was Blue Kai, now um, Oracle uh, um, DMP. So what that means is, I've spoken earlier about the need, the better, our personalization is better and better the deeper and deeper customer d information we have, data we have. Well, if you're a prospect landing on a travel site, that travel site doesn't know much about you because the only data we have is from, it's much deeper for existing customers, okay? Mm -hmm. The DMP's perfect. So that will bring you, what are they in market for? 
they're a market for a beach holiday or, or a tracking holiday. So we, we have that information available now. We can target and personalize the experiences that we deliver dependent on that uh, DMP data. So that's a fantastic, easy, obvious use case. So Tim, I wonder if you could speak a little bit about the exchange of value for data um, that, that now is getting more and more, you know, kind of, of headlines with, with, with Google Maps and this and that, where you know, the more data you provide them, the better service they can give, but before it was kind of like a, a, a free thing, you didn't necessarily know that it was, it was um, a value exchange, and now it was, of course it's a value exchange. When you're trying to build all this data around the customer to get the context and the personalization, yes. um, what are some best practices that you see that really uh, expedite and kind of accelerate that process so that at the end of the day, you can actually provide a more contextual, better experience? Right. So you've, kept, you've hit on the key barrier. People have been talking about personalization for years. Actually doing it in real life is, is, has proven hard. One of the reasons is, bizarrely, the more data you have, the harder it is to um, personalize the online experience. The reason is that you've got to take decisions in a very short period of time. I mean, milliseconds, blink of an eye. You've got to change the experience. Um, if you have a vast amount of data, how are you going to do that? What data is actually predictive or not? So um, I mentioned that on our platform, we have automated data mining. The reason is that we are trying to extract from the vast amount of data feeds that we have, what are the two or three or 10 key attributes that help me work out what you want when you land on a website or what type of payment process or, or, or cart process we should use for you compared with someone else. Um, so that distillation of all of these, all of this data into a few predictive attributes that can be used um, is critical. And without that, we spend an awful lot of time in that process. It's a core part of the platform. That is so counterintuitive. That is that's great insight. Because you would presume the more the better, right? The more the easier. Of course, the, I have. The human brain is is something that big. You can't. Right, you can't. Right. So you need if you're going to if you're going to hypothesize that. I think this, this bit of information might be useful to offer a, a differentiated experience or offer to one person compared with another. Um, you can only deal with a certain range of data. Right. So the first thing is make the problem manageable. Use the technology we have to make the problem understandable and manageable. And to your point, if I'm on a travel site and I'm booking a business trip versus a, a family yeah. trip, I'm a completely different state of mind and the influencing factors that are going to help drive my decision are probably totally different. Right, so that's a great example because unfortunately, you're not going to tell us what mode, what mo sort of mode you're in. So we have to deduce. You're very well, to Orlando, but you can't even do it with Orlando anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's, all, that's all business. Well, data too. quality is a huge problem. You mentioned that you know, data is the fuel for the engine, marketing engine, and you get dirty data. You talk about managing the problem. This comes yeah. down to what we call precognitive. You know, cognitive computing is a term that's been kicked around. Social business, uh, marketing, automation, all this now is being automated. If you have too much data, you don't get the, the scope. So you got to have more intelligence about the data, or clean exactly. data. Exactly, so How do you, you solve that problem? That's really kind of yeah. challenging. Well, so in the, in the um, example we were just talking about, um, you're not going to tell me you're a business traveler, but one of the attributes we have about you is how many people are you booking? What, when you went in the search engine, how many people were on the trip? What was the timing of the trip? How does it compare to your past purchases? You can actually, if you, with one or two attributes, you can quite accurately predict that you're in a business mode, not family right. mode. Well, Google so, has all that information. If you have Gmail, I can search <laughs> Southwest <laughs> and I guess my flight's right at the top of search results. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty exactly. interesting. Yeah, or, so, you know, they have all the data. Yeah, so we're doing a very similar thing. Yeah. Just on a, uh, a client by client. Yeah, so basis. identity becomes a big part of it. So here's what we talked about. And again, this is kind of like the open question. Um, everyone's fighting for that identity. This notion of the federated identity seems to be kind of in this platform war situation. You got Facebook, 1.6 billion people on the platform. That's just Facebook, not including WhatsApp or Instagram. That's a walled garden. Yep. Google's a walled garden. Yeah, and you have everything else out there. So, all right, obviously advertising will go to those platforms because that's where impression based. Yeah stuff will be or you know engaging the watering hole of users but when you're out in the wild the open web everything's up for grabs that's where the one to one gets interesting yes how do you guys view that world if we move to this kind of personalization paradigm 
that you guys have pioneered, now Oracle's scaling up, it's really about what's going on in the wild for the user, off property or off whatever they want to call the term, not just within these platforms. I mean, that's a challenge. Yeah. How do you manage that identification? So, sure. Open so, ID, other things? Yeah, well, um, the, um, so it depends what you're trying to achieve, but for a lot of the work we do, we don't need uh, anonymous information from your, say, your, your web browser, okay? We've got CRM information on you. We've got uh, a whole lot of information from uh, um, Oracle Data Cloud. We've got a vast amount of information that we can use to work out uh, what experience we should offer you if you're a high value customer compared with a low value. We don't need all the rest of it. When you're dealing with prospects on the site, you've never seen them before, that's when you're in the regime then where you want to try and distill as much information as you can about a person from all these vast clouds of data around. Um, and that's where um, Blue Kai really plays a very important role because they do the same as us. They take this vast amount of browsing data from, I think it's two billion or something, um, uh, visitors and condense it down into useful attributes. What are they in market for? How long have they been in market for? Where are they? So that you have to process all this data or you'll get nowhere. Tim, thanks for coming on theCUBE and sharing your insights, really appreciate it. Final question, I'll give you the final word here. What is the future of personalization in this world? What's it going to look like? What's it going to look like? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's okay, you can be wrong. It's a future <laughs> question. <laughs> you can be somewhat I've, right. We've got There's no wrong answer. We've got customers who are pretty close to it, actually. Um, so, uh, look, the, I can tell you what the ultimate test is. You don't really care what's happening behind the scenes. When you go on the website, or someone's uh, website, do you, does it feel like they understand your need and that they're taking sensible, logical decisions that are, that are helping you do the job you want to succeed? And are they then helping you to discover what else is available to you? That, that's the feeling you want. That's what. And, and yeah. Is it relevant? Do they find what they're looking for, and yeah. do they, you get the end result? Yeah. That's, Transaction. Yeah, and it doesn't matter how we get there, but that's where <laughs> we have to get to. Well, I love that you said it was a feeling too, because the other thing we always talk about, right? Whether it's magical or creepy, right? And if it's a good feeling, then that's that's on the magical side. It doesn't have side. to be creepy at all. Right. Right. Really? No, because if it's done well, then then it won't be. You don't creepy. even know it's happening. Yeah. It's that's beautiful. Well. Tim Brown, thanks for coming on the queue. Appreciate uh, the time, sharing uh, your insights about uh, personalization. That's theCUBE, we'll be right back with more live coverage here in Las Vegas after the short break. Thanks so much. Pleasure.